Coffee Lake, here we come. What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Geared Inc where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you and on my channel that's PC Tech, Games and Gear. And today we are doing a review of a motherboard along with kind of an update on some um, power delivery issues with the new Coffee Lake 370 chipset. Uh, just kind of a quick kind of update on that. Um, now this is going to be the first part of a couple reviews of pieces coming together for a Coffee Lake build that I'm doing for a friend. So basically most of the parts have been ordered. There's a couple things I'm going to be doing a review on with just some of the pieces I ordered. And and then I'm bomb back order currently for the CPU like I'm sure many of you are. So hopefully that'll be here before the end of the month so we can finish the build and finish the uh, series of videos. But the review we're doing today is on this motherboard. Now this is the Asus uh, Strix uh, Z370 gaming motherboard. Now typically I've used Asus for a lot of my motherboard builds. Uh, the one in here is actually currently an MSI for AM4. I was one of the lucky ones. My original board was the uh, cross uh, crosshair from ASUS. You know, they're very high-end board. That's what I did with the uh, Z2170 for my Skylake build that I had previous to. That was also ASUS, also in kind of the same vein. Now, um, what you kind of get with this board, and the reason that I picked it is that this build is going to be RGB. There is a lot of support for this motherboard if you are going to be doing an RGB build. Um, something important that you need to know also as well is that this also comes with a Wi-Fi antenna That's something that we're seeing in some of these newer motherboards where basically there is going to be a attachment on the back um, You know with all the IO and stuff where you'll be able to like screw in, you know, kind of a wireless It's like a little antenna stand and then it's got a little connector that you screw in the back if Wi-Fi is important to you, um, that's something that's also uh, featured with this board. So we're just going to do kind of a quick unboxing. You're going to take a look at what's inside, and then we're going to go over the power delivery um, kind of things that you need to be aware of with the new release of the 370 chipset for Coffee Lake. All right, guys. So I was actually going to do this. I have kind of a table that looks a little bit cleaner, but honestly, my my office right now, I still have a ton of baby stuff for my son. So we're going to, you know. I'm not above doing this review literally on the edge of the bed that's in this room so that we can kind of take a look at what's inside. So here we have the box and just to give you guys an idea of kind of the feature set you're getting, you know, there's a bunch of different things uh, that just you need to be aware of with this board. And again, the reason that I'm picking it is because it's gonna have a lot of support for RGB and then it has the Aura Sync feature of uh, ASUS, where essentially, you, uh, which is just software where you can kind of sync up everything that's attached to it. It does have some headers, obviously, to connect RGB um, lighting to. I'm actually gonna be using a Hue Plus um, and the NZXT RGB um, a, the AER, I believe is what they're called, fans. And so um, that's kind of important to me, or I'm just gonna end up daisy chaining them together. Uh, but just being able to connect it to the board, that's something that we, I wanna be able to do. And then obviously SLI, Crossfire, or Sync, 3D, um, something that's interesting, it says it supports 3D printing. So if that's something that you're planning on doing, this might be a board you wanna consider. And it's not a bad cost, came in right around $200. And um, for all the features you're getting, I honestly don't think it's bad. So pretty sure that's the antenna inside of there. And I'm actually going to check on that just super fast. You know what? Maybe not. We'll take a look at that in a second because that box is a little harder to get open. Um, you have the motherboard obviously inside the kind of cardboard tray that comes right here. I'm going to show you guys just kind of there. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic right now. You guys are going to have a chance to see it later. But it's got this really nice, it's not... I'm sorry, getting out of focus there. Just one sec. There we go. So it's not white. It is this gunmetal silver, and it looks, honestly, it looks sick as hell. So if you're going to be deciding to build out of this case, just understand this is not white. Um, if you're doing like a white and black build, it is actually kind of a reflective silver, which should actually reflect the RGB lighting really good when we get the rest of the pieces. Have the M.2 cover down here as well if you want to do an M.2. And then we are going to just skip ahead because obviously there's some barcodes and stuff in here that I don't want anybody to see. So we'll be right back. All right, guys. So inside the case, you can see here you have your manual on this side, a bunch of just the additions, uh, your IO port cover, uh, some SATA cables, things like that. On this side, you have your SLI bridge, um, a couple of the different pieces. As far as for if you're installing an M.2, um, standoffs, things like that in here, uh, I think this is, yeah, that's just the CPU, extra CPU cover. So, I mean, that's kind of what's inside. And then, yeah, inside this box that we were looking at just a second ago is, in fact, the the uh, the antenna if you're going to be doing Wi-Fi on this. And it is seriously, it is not wanting to open for me. 
um, because I'm not opening it correctly. So yeah, so there we go. All right, guys, so there you can see, just kind of get an idea of the size of this thing. It's got a little stand. So essentially what you do is you plug, you're gonna plug this cord into the back of the motherboard where it allows you to attach, and then you just set that on your desk and it acts as a Wi-Fi receiver um, if you wanna have Wi-Fi, which is actually kind of a cool feature. I personally don't prefer that because I'd always wanna be um, kind of wired in, uh, but if you wanna have that feature or if it's just something extra, that's kind of a good value add for this motherboard. All right, guys, so that gave you a look at what's inside with the motherboard. I'm super excited to get in the build when we get all the rest of the pieces together during the rest of the month, and hopefully the uh, 8700K uh, 8, gets here sooner rather than later. I'm still on back order, but hopefully within like the next two weeks they'll ship. Now, one of the things uh, as far as for power delivery, let's talk about this. So there have been some rumors that the power delivery for the 370 chipset um, has been having trouble where we're getting inconsistent benchmarks across many different reviewers and a lot of it has to do with the power delivery that's on the board. Now, typically um, what we're seeing is that a BIOS update fixes the problem. If you are having issues though, I'd be interested to hear back if any of you were lucky enough to get your hands on a 8700K um, or 8600K if you're having performance issues related to power. But just understand that just like when Ryzen launched, there was a bunch of bumps in there, the 370 chipset and launch was definitely rushed. That's why it's really hard to get your hands on an i7-8700K right now. And so if you are going to be buying this board, make sure that just like Ryzen, you are doing um, any BIOS updates that you can as soon as you get it and so that are available. And I would continue to do that until you see stability. And then after that, I mean, it's more so up to you. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a thumbs down. Get subscribed either way. I am like on the brink of getting 100 subs, and that might not seem exciting to some people. It's super exciting to me because I, again, I've only been doing this a couple of months. Knowing that there are people who can tolerate me enough to subscribe to my channel makes me excited and very happy. We hope to see you next time here on Gear Dink.